Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at variables. In the last video, we learned about object-oriented programming. What is a class? What is an object? And what is a namespace? I recommend you watch that before going through this one. Today we're going to be learning about something called variables. And I'm sure you're wondering, okay, how does this relate to objects and object-oriented programming? Well, variables are names given to data that we need to store and manipulate in our programs. So you can think of a variable like a container. If you need to store a piece of data in your program, you need to put it inside a container. So what's the relationship between variables and objects, you're wondering? An object is a thing, like an object is an object, but a variable is something that points at the object. So if you think about an object as something that stores data types and values, an object stores a group of variables. So let's elaborate on this example a little bit further. If you have a class of person, which is a blueprint for what a person can be, we have a couple of data types like integer string, where we can say that we want every person to be able to have the data of age and we want every person to be able to have the data of name now that is the class defining the blueprint for what we want our persons or people to be now the object is an instance of that class so we're looking at a person named bob who is age 15 and it's greeting howdy right so age in this case is a container for data type 15 name is a container for data type bob and greeting is a container for data type howdy the variables are what make up the objects and the objects are defined by the classes so if you think about the class like a floor plan the object is the building and the variable are the different revit components I feel like that would be the easiest analogy to construction, even though that's not exactly what it is, but I'm hoping that clarifies this relationship a little bit more. So now that we know that variables store data types, so what are these data types? It's important to know c -sharp data types because they form the building blocks of all of the coding we're going to be doing. So c -sharp has data types like every other programming language. The int stands for integer, and it's for numbers that have no decimal or fractional parts. The float is a floating point number or a decimal, and it has numbers that can start from the range that is shown on the screen. There are three data types that can take decimals, depending on the kind of program you're trying to create and the kind of values you imagine it may generate. That influences the choice of which data type you want to pick for decimal numbers, numbers that have a remainder. When it's a whole number, when you want your program to always give you, if you think about a calculator um, and you're trying to create a program that would divide, let's say, the number of years you've worked by the hours you've worked per day. If you are certain that you always want that program to work with a whole number, then you want to store your result in a data type of integer. But if there are instances where that result is going to have a remainder, then you want to choose between the following data types. So the first is a float. The second is known as a double, which is also a float, but it can store much more numbers. So when you're dealing with computational programs that your results are going to be much, much larger. Think about a Revit environment, for example, where you can have a site that is very small or a site that's very large. You need to decide which of the data types will be able to hold the results of what you're trying to calculate. Now, the double is the default data type for numbers with remainders in C Sharp. So whenever you think about coding, if you don't specify what kind of data type you want, if you just write the number with a decimal point, C Sharp is going to assume that you want it to be a double. So it treats all floating point numbers as doubles by default. And you can imagine why, because doubles do take on a much wider range. So it's like the safest choice for C-sharp to assume that what you're trying to store in your container is a double. There is also a decimal. Now the decimal is the same in terms of data type for the float and the double, but the decimal has a much, much smaller range and much more precise. So it's better for financial applications, things that we use in banking, 
where we need it to be extremely precise. If you think about an application, for example, that is going to be converting currency rates, you need something that will be extremely precise. So a double is larger, a float is smaller, but a decimal is even smaller than a float and more precise. The char stands for character. So if you think of the things on your keyboard, the QWERTY your keyboard, the char is all of those characters, except obviously for the numbers. But the letters, the symbols, all of those things are characters, not to be confused with strings. So a character is a single character, but a string is a piece of text. You can think of string as anything that will hold your words and your sentences. And anytime you're dealing with a text data set that has to do with just grammar, just words and sentences, those are strings. But a single character is a char. So the Boolean is a very interesting data type because it can only hold two values that are either true or false. If you think about a Revit program and you want to be able to determine, for example, whether a window should be able to stay hosted on a wall. You can say that if there is an active wall in the project, then allow the person host the window. Else, if there is no active wall, if wall in this case is false, then return a message to the user saying, sorry, there is nowhere for you to host a window. Now, actually what I've just described is known as an if else statement. And in the next video, we're going to be looking more um, into other data types and how we can actually start to string them together in variables to create algorithms using the different operations in C Sharp. So how do you assign data types to variables? We've seen the different data types like char, string, float, and we've said that variables are containers. In programming, you would use the equal sign. So the equal sign in programming is different from math. It's not equals as in this is a result. It's equals as in this data on the right is being assigned to the data on the left. The, the, the value on the right is always being assigned to the value on the left. So when you say X equal Y, or you say Y equal X, in math, that would be the same thing. But in programming, it means you're assigning the value of Y to X, or you're assigning the value of X to Y. So if you think about this example, we want to store the value of 5,000 as an income statement. We want to say that anytime we are looking to generate any sort of calculations with the person's income, we want that value to be 5,000. And in programming, it's kind of hierarchical where if you wanted to change the value of the income later, you could assign a new value and it will immediately overwrite the previous value. The code usually reads from top to bottom and it updates the values held in each variable based on assignments made from top to bottom. Finally, we're going to look at operators. Now, these are just a few of the operators that work with mathematical elements in C Sharp, which in this case are the numbers. And looking at them, they look exactly like mathematical operations as well. They do follow the rule of PEMDAS. You first go through your parentheses before multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and so on. You can Google what PEMDAS means if you're hearing about it for the first time. In some regions, it's also known as BODMAS. The rules of BODMAS or PEMDAS applies where it follows the order of operations for mathematical equations. So let's say, for example, X is 7 and Y is 2. Addition will give you a sum of those two numbers. Subtraction will give you a subtraction of those two numbers. Multiplication does the same. Division does the same. Now, the only one that might be new to people who have done grade school math is the modulus. So unlike division, that gives you the actual number of, let's say, in this case, 7 divided by 2, and it usually rounds down its answer to the nearest integer. You'd really get a float answer unless you specify that you want it to be a float. A modulus, on the other hand, will give you a remainder. So if 7 divided by 2 is 3 remaining 1, a modulus gives you the remainder. 
And there are instances in programming where you want to be able to work with what's left versus what is the division, right? So let's say we want to know how many more spaces on our building facade we have to add some glazing. We are not trying to look for how many spaces we have. We're trying to look for what's left after we've added glazing. That's just an example. I try as much as possible to give construction related examples so that the concepts are more clear to you. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at more operations and more data types. We're going to be referencing this cheat sheet. So if you want to be an advanced student, you can go ahead and access the PDF in the URL and start to take a look. In the next video, we're gonna be going through the cheat sheet. It's a very good summary of all of the data types and operations you can do in C Sharp. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe, it helps me out a lot. It tells me that you're enjoying this content and it supports my videos showing up for the YouTube algorithm so that more people are able to enjoy my content. Please subscribe, it really does matter. I know that you're tired of hearing YouTubers telling you to subscribe, but it's kind of the only way that we can get rewarded for all of the work that we put into creating this content for you. So thank you so much and see you soon.